What's up everybody, I'm Brent Smith from the band Shine Down, and I want you to keep watching United Rock Nation. Yes, I do. So, um, three years after Threat to Survival, you're back with that album, Attention Attention. Um, it puts us into the head of a character who goes through a lot of emotions. Um, Eric said that he wanted the album to feel like a journey. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel like it's maybe a concept album then? It was interesting because in 2016, at the back half of that year, in November and, uh, and December of that year, we were on a tour, we were finishing up an album cycle. And Eric just did not want to go crazy on tour with like kind of, you know, the days can be long, you wait all day to get on stage. Um, so he decided to bring his Pro Tools rig out on that particular tour and he wrote a con you know, he wrote a, a composition every day. So no lyrics, no melody, just would write a song in a format. Um, usually like no more than three minutes and 30 seconds long or what have you. So he ended up having 22 pieces. Um, and in the beginning of January of last year, I was ready to listen to them. So we got together finally, and then I listened to them all together, and I thought to myself, wow, you know, because there's such a thread, they were all linked to one another, it sounded like a concept record. Um, the interesting thing about that is the only thing that we used from those 22 pieces was the, the synth that's in the beginning of the song Brilliant. Uh, which is the finale of Attention, Attention. But that's kind of where the concept record idea started, but we didn't use anything else from those pieces except that front part of Brilliant. Everything else was written from, you know, square one. Um, but it's not a concept record. We call it a story album. Um, it's it, 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 it takes such a poignant, focused, it's, it's very much a record that makes a bold statement um, because it's a lot of, it, it, it's very emotional in regards to the psychology of what's going on in this story. So, um, it, you know, the songs do the work though. I mean, they let the listener go through a journey. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that it was meant to do, we just didn't want to do the old school approach of Traditionally, you write a hundred songs, and I'm down to ten. Here you go. This was way more uh, deliberate, and uh, it was everything was on purpose. Okay. Uh, as you said, every song reflects a different emotion, mm -hmm. less and less painful and tortured. Uh, it really feels like a very uplifting album. Well, uh, yeah. Was it? A message to yourself at the time. What's the last question? The last part? Was it a message to yourself at the time? It, yes and no. Um, more yes. It's a record about all four of us in the band. It's about me, it's about Eric, it's about Zach, it's about Barry. Um, it's really, it encompasses kind of the last four years of our lives together and this huge journey that got us to where we are now. Um, you know, I've always said that you have to fall into a hole to figure out how to get out of it. And, you know, I, I have to believe that with this record, because... It wasn't a difficult record to make, it wasn't a difficult record to write because it was very truthful, it has a lot of honesty, there's nothing that's been phoned in, um, it, it all came from a very real place and situations and just, you know, myself and Barry and Eric and Zach were with each other all the time. Um, so I know everything about them and they know everything about me. Um, the other thing too is that we don't, we don't not talk to each other. Like we genuinely love we, love each other. We we're on the same bus. We every two weeks we have a day. It's usually like on a Friday, but it's just a day where we get in a room, just the four of us, and you know whoever wants to take the floor just takes it, and we just talk about what's going on. And we're always hanging out with each other, but there's a bit you know there's a lot of psychology that goes into being in a band. Um, at my darkest moments. 
those three individuals never judged me. They just were there to pick me up. Um, and uh, they've always been, you know, that human instinct and, and just treating each other like human beings. They, they've always been very respectful of that. And the same thing with them. If they've been down, I've never judged. I just, you're just there to pick them up. Yeah. Um, it sounds like a very personal album for you as people and as a band. Mm -hmm. um, do you always draw inspiration from your own feeling and experiences? Yeah, I have to, um, because I'm the main lyricist in the band, and you know, I, I take a lot of the um, in the songwriting that we do. A lot of the language is done through me. Um, that's an interesting thing too on this album because it was the first album where th there was a lot of input with the three of them and me in regards to the lyrics. Um, I asked them a lot more questions. I asked them a lot more opinions about certain things. They weren't afraid to push me in one direction or, or what have you. Because normally they, they, they leave me alone when it comes to the lyrics. They're like, we know that he's going to bring them. So, and he has a way that he does things. Um, and it, it seems to work. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to let him, we're going to let him keep doing it. I didn't really want that this time. I wanted, I wanted their input. Zach actually helped me tremendously with the lyrics on this record um, and uh, yeah it was a was a was a big was a huge help um, I've got to write about what I know I can't really unless you know we're being commissioned to like write a song for like a film or a TV series or you know something that already has a storyline built in and we're asked to like write upon that But if it's shine down and it's us, I can only write about what I've been through and the places that I've seen, the people that I've met, and you know, just the fact that I still firmly believe that every morning that I wake up, that's that's a gift. You're not promised tomorrow, um, and you know, that's the yin and the yang of the band too. Sometimes people will ask like, "Where did you come up with the name?" Of the band, and you know, it's it's interesting because the name of the band is the yin and the yang of just you know human emotion. You know, sometimes you shine, sometimes you're down. You know, it's like a yin yang. Everything that's good has a little bit of bad, and everything that's bad has a little bit of good. Basically, what I'm saying is it's all about balance. Yeah, um, it's a very honest way of writing. Uh, do you feel like writing about emotion is just finally writing about life? Yeah, absolutely. You gotta. I've just never been one to like keep it in. Um, at a young age, I started to write, um, and for whatever reason, I just I don't really know. I don't really ask the question a lot either. Like I just I just do it. I've done it since I was like, I started writing when I was like eight years old, um, and I for whatever reason, just been able to articulate it on paper um, and make it all make sense. Um, and then one day I kind of figured out that I might be able to sing um, because I really, really wanted to at a young age. Like I knew I wanted to sing like really early on. Um, and just out of you know, no fear at all. I just started yelling and singing out like all the stuff that I would write. Um, it's just part of what I do. Um, I, I, it doesn't fall short on me that a lot of people have told me over the years that um, I've been able to somehow express how they felt in more ways than one. And I've been, you know, told that, you know, I'm, I'm very much appreciated for that. But in the same breath, I only have one boss. And it just happens to be everybody in the audience, so I wouldn't be here without them. So, uh, you know, I, the last thing I'm going to do is lie to them. You know, I'm always going to be honest with them. Yeah. Uh, you went through a lot of things during the previous tour. Did you feel the need to write this new album while on tour? Well, I, I think that the... Most of the time, at least on the last five records, you tour 
and then you get done with tour. Tour can last, I mean, we've been on a tour on an album cycle where it was 18 months, and then we've been on a tour, the longest touring cycle we ever did was the Sound of Madness record. We toured that for 37 months. Um, and then, like, with Amaryllis, that was like 24 months, and then Threat to Survival, even, we did our last show, uh, technically, was like, November of last year so we were touring that all the way through but that was kind of on purpose with this album too because when we played Download in 2016 um, Steve Harris from Iron Maiden saw us play on the main stage and actually asked if we would go on tour with them in 2017 and I was like really? <laughs> and and uh, so long story short that happened um, we did 44 days with them last year um, in, uh, in January. But that was cool because we knew we were going to start the writing process for what became Attention Attention, but we usually just spent the year on the record. But you're in a cave the whole time. You're like in a studio. You don't even see the, you don't even know what time it is. You know, you're in there for like 18 hours. Sometimes you sleep there, you know, you don't even leave for five days. You know? Um, I didn't want to do that this time. I needed some perspective. You know, I didn't want to just be in that same environment constantly. Um, I think that's one of the reasons that helped a lot by having perspective when you came back to the record. That's why it wasn't as difficult to write because it wasn't like you were just beating yourself in the head trying to come up with ideas every day in the same location. We were able to kind of stop for a minute, go play some shows, come back, Okay, I'm refreshed. I got a little bit of a clearer head. I can go back to where you know I can, I can begin this again. So, I think that actually helped with the focus on the album. Yeah, you said you needed more input from your bandmates this time. Yes. Um, did you also need to write the lyrics based on what they wrote, musically speaking? Um, there were. I'm trying to remember the whole layout of a, of a lot of the songs. A lot of the songs happened, like, from the writing standpoint. You know, we would begin early in the day. So, like, a lot of songs that me and Eric worked on, um, he might have had, like, something the night before that he started to kind of fool around with, you know? And then we would get into the studio, like, at 9 in the morning. And then... Uh, He'd play me something, and it was a little too, like, it was a little too much, you know? And then I was like, just hang on a second, just grab, just grab the acoustic, or grab, like, the little handheld piano, or something like that. And then we would kind of, like, strip everything down to just the core of what that song was. So that, for me, helps me center in on the melody. Like, I don't always need the, the, the cymbals and the drums and the guitars and the synth and, like, sometimes I'm just like, yo, just, just play me the, play me the root, you know, of everything. Let me kind of figure out, you know, where my, my mind is going to go melodically. Because sometimes it, um, usually with me it starts with the melody and then the words start to come. Um, and But definitely, like, once the music kind of goes into a place where we start building the track, um, and then Zach gets in there, and, and, and then Barry gets in there, um, and we start maneuvering those types of things, then you start to kind of get a... the song starts to speak to you a bit. Um, but I've got to be able to flush the melody out first. Like, I've got to be able to get the melody out. Um, and then the words will start to come, and then as we build the song, the attitude of the song will start to kind of show itself and then it, I kind of, and then I'm off. Yeah. Regarding the production, it's Herrick who was in charge of this. Why did you feel the need to keep it from an internal point of view? So, the really amazing thing in our career, we've been very, very fortunate to have had a lot of great teachers. We've worked with some, and we've worked with some incredible producers and some just brilliant Uh, engineers um, when the when the topic came up of producers I kind of just basically knew instantaneously that he was ready to do it um, 
because you know Eric produced Cut the Cord, Eric produced Diamond Eyes. We did a song called Her Name Is Alice for the Alice in Wonderland soundtrack for Johnny Depp and Tim Burton's reimagining of Alice in Wonderland. We had a song on the very first Avengers uh, movie soundtrack. So he had done you know songs before, on top of being a writer for you know a lot of the material on all the records, but he had never done an entire record, an entire album. And he was ready, you know. He he wanted to do it. He he knew exactly what he was going to do, and how he was going to do it, and how we were all going to facilitate each other. Um, sometimes, when you maybe not like solo artists or artists that are in different genres of music or what have you, but in rock, hard rock, heavy metal bands, because it's such a community, and everybody has an opinion. Um, it's uh, people say that's not a good idea for a band to self-produce. It never like works out because you don't have you know, you're you're inside each other and you don't necessarily you know you think everything you're doing is and then you give it to the public and because maybe you didn't have an outside uh, opinion maybe it falls flat. We didn't care about that, and the other side of that was is that we knew exactly what we were going to do. Um, we knew how we wanted it to sound. Uh, he produced the record uh, alongside myself, but he's the main producer. He mixed the album. I was with him for all of this. So was Zach, so was Barry. Um, there was a point where Barry and Zach kind of let me and him, you know, make sure we were keeping everything with its original intent of what we set out to do. Um, but he was never, Eric that is, he was never, he never second guessed himself. And he was not like walking around scratching his head going, I don't know, what do you think? And I don't know if this is right, and maybe we shouldn't do that. There was none of that. Like every day he had a very specific focus. And he was, you know, he was, you know, he was the captain, you know, of this particular project. And we all just completely trusted him. And, uh, and he did just a astonishingly brilliant job. He did, I mean, he, uh, believe me, there were, there were days that I would just watch him do what it is he does. And you can't teach that though, that instinct. Because being in, that's another thing too, he, he does know how to turn those parts of his brain on and off. Like he knows when to be the band member and to be the man on stage and to do the thing, but he also knows in the studio when to be the performer and when to be the engineer and how to be a producer. Like he knows how to talk to Barry when Barry's doing drum tracks. He knows how to talk to me when I'm doing vocals and because I've worked with him so much. Um, same thing with Zach. I'll give you an example. Like with Zach, there was one day where he I think he was doing it just to mess with him, Eric. Um, but he just kept going. You know, Zach was playing this part, and uh, Eric was just going, "Do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again." And you know, Zach was like, he took the guitar. He's like, "You play it," and and he's like, "No," he's like, "You play it," and and he's just laughing at him. And Zach was getting frustrated, and so um, Zach was like, "I don't even want to play guitar right now," and. Uh, Eric goes, you know what? That's a good idea. Hang on a second. He turns around and he goes over to the basses. He grabs a bass guitar. He walks over and he puts it around Zach. And Zach's like, what the hell are you doing? He was like, play the bass on this. And we, um, and then he hits record and he does like three passes of the bass on a particular song or what have you. And Eric's like, that's awesome. We're moving on to another song. I want to keep the bass on. And so all of a sudden, Zach's playing the bass, you know? And that's so awesome, man, that he would, he said, you play it, you know? No, you, actually, you play my instrument. Like, you know, it's, it's really cool to watch. And the same thing with that, like with the vocals, um, he wouldn't wear me out. Like, we would look at the structure of everything and I would know what I was going to do and you know we would lay the song out verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, bridge, whatever, the double chorus, what have you but like I knew the song and you know it wasn't like sing the verse 
50 times. And okay, now let's do the second verse. He would do like four or five passes and be like, moving on. You know, and uh, you know, he's like, you ready to do the chorus? Let's go. I'd do the chorus one time and he'd be like, do another one. And then we'd stack it and he'd be like, moving on. You know, um, because he wanted me to be fresh. He was like, why would I wear him out? And then it doesn't sound like I want him to sound. Even though there were a couple of moments in the record where he did kind of want that tone in my voice, where it was a little like uh, strained, if you will. So we would do a couple things here and there like that. But he uh, he just knows what he's doing. Yeah. He's really good. Um, it's still, as I said, a very uplifting album like the previous one was. Uh, do you feel like it's a role or even maybe a mission for you as an artist to help people out when there's trouble? I think it is my complete understanding that I'm here to serve the audience um, and the listener. Um, I don't want people to be afraid to fail. And what I mean by that is your, your life is tricky, the world can be tricky. Don't be afraid to fail because eventually, as long as you get back up and you keep trying and you keep at it, you will eventually win. I know this because I've seen it. And it's, it's a very, very powerful moment in someone's life when they understand that about themselves. Like, you're gonna fail, but I guarantee you, you'll, you're gonna win more. If when you do fail, you keep trying. Like, keep doing it until you get it, you know? Um, I think that's just, you know, part of being a human being. And... Uh, a lot of times there are just so many outside voices and opinions and you should do this, no you should be that, why aren't you this? Just be you, you know, and, and th th start with that, you know what I mean? Like start with you because at the end of the day when you wake up in the morning I guarantee you you're the first person you see. If you cannot make yourself happy and be comfortable in your own skin you're never going to be able to do that for somebody else. Um, and this is not meant to be like self-helpy or anything. Like I'm, I'm not preaching. It's just, I want people to know that it's okay to fail because eventually you will win. And I also want people to know that, look, when you are successful, take a second to be proud of yourself. You know what I mean? And try never to phone things in, you know, don't coast, you know. I don't believe in a ceiling, nor do I believe in a top. I'm trying to always outdo what I've done. And I've been to the top of a lot of mountains, and I've taken a moment and taken a deep breath and been in the moment. But then I go find a bigger mountain. Yeah. Well, that's a beautiful way to end this. Thank you very, very much for, Thank you. for answering this. And I won't obviously tell you goodbye, but until next time. I love that. I love that. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Brent Smith from the band Shine Down, and you are watching. I forgot what it was. What was it? <laughs>